Today we're going to take a look at what I think are the top 10 best beginner board games of all time. You're having a game night and you're inviting some people over and they're not really that big into board games yet and you're trying to ease them in. These are the games that are going to help you. Catan, we've had a good run. I'm just not that into you, so it's time to say goodbye. One last really quick. Okay, that's it. We're saying goodbye to Catan. You've been replaced. I can't do it. Okay, I did it. Threw it away. I'm Alex, this is Operation Game Table, a channel about board games and board game strategy. Before we get into my number 10 pick, I just wanna say thank you to all the subscribers. We have just reached 100 subscribers. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Is it recording? Total noob. Classic noob. I think it's recording. <gasps> what a noob. At the end of this video, we're gonna be doing a game giveaway for me to say thank you to you, the subscriber. I'll tell you exactly how to do it. And without further ado, let's get to number 10. One of my favorite types of games. It's a World War II game. It's pretty much a two-player game. You can play it as teams, but it's basically a two-player game surrounding the D-Day invasion and a lot of epic battles that took place during those times where America got into World War II. And that is Memoir 44. This game is really easy to learn. The rules are simple and you can go through, you start with the beginner battle and you have a whole book full of battles that goes through World War II, starting with the D-Day invasion. Played about halfway through this so far. There's lots of other expansions if you love this game. It's a two to eight player game. Now really it's a two player game, but you can go up to eight players if you were playing on teams four and four. The board gets laid out, enemy troops on one side, and the other troops on another side. It's a card-driven game, so you each have cards, and the cards will be either left, right, or middle, and you have to choose which one you're doing, so you're kind of limited. You can't do everything you want in this game. It's limited selection based on the cards you get, so you have to be strategic and careful in your planning. There is a little bit of luck involved. You're rolling dice. If you want a game that's similar to this, that's even easier, might I suggest Air, Land, and Sea. Air, Land, and Sea, much smaller game, a military game, and it's card driven. It just takes 20 minutes to play. It's a two player game. If you're looking for a game to get kids into that are not ready for something like this, then maybe Risk or Stratego. Those are classic games. I started off playing with those. And then one of my favorite games of all time is Diplomacy. Diplomacy is a two to seven player game. In this game, there's no luck involved at all. This is a very simple game to teach as far as the rules go. You've got, you can either move, you can attack, you can support, or you can convoy. Those are your four moves that you can do. This is a game where you have to be diplomatic. You're gonna be backstabbing each other. If you win this game, you're not gonna win this game without backstabbing at least one ally. You're starting off in the game and there's seven of you and you're gonna end up the game and there's gonna be one superpower and that superpower wins the game. Great game. For number nine, I'm looking at economy type games. So if you're looking at a beginner economy game, to get people started in the hobby, my suggestion is to start with Jaipur. Jaipur, I used to call it Hypor because I thought it was like the J was Spanish, but they're in the Middle East and it's all camels. Hypor become the Maharaja's personal trader. So this is a trading set collection game. It's two player only and it goes really quick. You can play, It's there's three rounds in the game and you're trading in with the market. So there's a market in the middle. There's cards that you place out in the middle of the board, cards in your hand, and you're trying to trade for the best goods that are worth the most amount of money. Whoever is the best trader in each round wins that round, and the best of three wins the game. Very simple, but it does have some pretty good strategy in the game for being such a simple game. This game came out a long time ago, and it is a very good game. I still highly recommend it today, especially for players starting out. Great beginner game for economy. If you're looking for another economic game and still kind of a starter game, 
is Raccoon Tycoon. This game's great because it's cute. There's a little cute fuzzy raccoon on there. There's a little cute little kitten and a little dog. There's little cats wearing pearls. This is a super cute game. And this is also a nice economy game. It's a little bit more complex, but it's more than two player. You can go up to five players, two to five players. More complex than Hypor. This would be the next step, Raccoon Tycoon, my next pick for the economy type games. Okay, so we did number 10 was Memoir 44. Number nine was Jaipur. Now we're getting to number eight. This is, I'm not really sure how to classify this game other than it is just, it's one of my favorite games. This is a, a game where each player is playing their own species and you're building your species. No, it's not dominant species. Select traits for your species. You can grow your species in population. You can grow your species in size. You can choose for your species to change traits. Maybe they were a plant eater. Now you're gonna turn them into a carnivore by changing your cards. This is Evolution The Beginning, and Evolution The Beginning, so this is a blast to play, super easy to learn, a lot of fun. You're building your own species, you're trying to make your species better than everybody else's. You can have more than one species, you can have three different species going on at the same time. Maybe this one's a carnivore, this one's a plant eater. You're all fighting for the same supply of food in the middle. If it runs out of food, and you have some of your species that hasn't eaten yet, they can't eat the food, then they die. If that species, if you lose population, if you go all the way down to population zero, your species just went extinct and it's out of the game. And then you can get another species later on and the goal of the game is to eat the most food. So whichever player can consume the most food, whether it's plant food from the center or carnivores eating other players' species, that's the player interaction part of this that's really fun. You can eat another player's species. They go down in population and you feed your carnivore. This is, this is just a great game. And if you're, if you're worried about a carnivore, all you have to do is develop a trait that protects you from that carnivore and you're safe from that carnivore unless that carnivore develops the same trait like flying. If you can fly and the carnivore can't, they can't eat you. But then if that carnivore develops wings and they can fly, now they can eat you. Play it. This is a great game, highly recommended. And if you really like this game, the next game I would go for, not just Evolution, I would go for Evolution Climate, which throws another little twist into the game as the climate of the planet gets either warmer or colder. Maybe there's an ice age, maybe there's a heat wave. Different things happen affecting different species around the game. Maybe there's less food, more food, maybe there's a disaster, maybe big species lose population, maybe little species lose population, depending on what the situation is. Highly recommend it. If you like this, definitely go for Evolution Climate for your next game. That is my number eight pick. Now let's see what I got for number seven. Best beginner board game. Number seven is a game where you are trying to build the greatest wonders in the world. It's a card drafting game where you pass your cards, you pick a card and then you pass your hand to either the right or the left and then they pick a card so you see what you're giving other players potentially. You don't want to let them get a good card. This game is Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders is a classic game. It's a great game to teach the card drafting mechanic to new players of the game. It's very simple, easy to teach, easy to learn. It's a lot of fun to play. It's been around for a long time. It's had a couple additions to the game. This is the newest edition. It has like foil, shinier cards, just a nice update to the artwork. Everything looks really cool. You're gonna choose a card that aligns with your strategy. There's different strategies you can go for to win this game, whether it's military or science or production, gold, and you try to build the best kind of economy, I guess, for your game. Every time you get a certain card, the brown cards and the gray cards give you resources and then you use those resources to purchase future cards. So in the beginning, the strategy of this game you wanna take is to get some of those early production cards right away and then use those production cards to help you purchase better cards later on and to purchase the wonders that you want. And if you succeed, if you do the best, then you win the game, it's a great game. This is better played with a higher player count of probably four or five players, I would suggest. And if you want another even better version, I like Seven Wonders Duel, even better than this game. That's the two player version of the game. Very good, very fun game. Probably one of the best 
two player games there is if it's not number one this is definitely on the top 10 best two player games there is now if you're looking for games that are similar in ease to seven wonders but maybe this type of ip doesn't really fit you very well you're looking for something that is more for kids to get into the game point city is a good recommendation point city is made by the same company that made point salad that was very popular point city is just another version it's made for one to four players ages 10 plus plays in 15 to 30 minutes this is a really cool also card driven game where you use you collect more cards these cards help you get other cards drafting cards building the best combinations resource management a little bit of engine building and if you like engine building and you want more engine building that's kind of the mechanic in seven wonders too is you're collecting resources that help you buy bigger things later on so you're building an economy you're building an engine that allows you to do better things later on if you like that you'll like this if you like this you'll like wingspan wingspan is a great game for beginners seven wonders is my number seven game these are just other games that are similar to seven wonders if you like seven wonders or if you want a different option that i would also say are good games any one of these point city wingspan seven wonders duel are all great choices my number six greatest beginner board game of all time is that's a deck building game so you're building a deck you're going to be drawing from that deck to see what cards are available as you get to the bottom of the deck you reshuffle and you go through the deck again so you can purchase cards to add to your deck that are better than the cards that you already have in your deck in order to make your deck stronger in this game you're going across a map so this is a game where you're racing across a map and you need certain cards to get you through certain parts of the map whether it's jungle or water this is a very fun game a great beginner game to teach deck building and that is el dorado by Reiner Knizia. The Quest for El Dorado by Reiner Knizia. Two to four player game, ages 10 and up. It says it plays in 60 minutes. I would say that's pretty accurate, even at four players. It, it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty fun game, pretty quick game. You're going across the map, the map changes. Every time you play, you can play different maps. You change the goals of the game. Expansions for this game as well. Teaching mechanics that will help in future games. And if you like the deck building concept of El Dorado, there's some other games that I also highly recommend for deck building mechanics. If you're into military strategy, but you also like deck building, then I highly recommend Undaunted. I've got Undaunted Normandy here, great game, deck building game, and military game at the same time. You're going through the map, you're trying to shoot at people, you're rolling dice, you're getting higher results, and you're trying to defeat the enemy in that game. Another game, if you just want the deck building concept, if you don't want the map that you're trying to race across, and you don't want the battlefield, and you just want the deck building all by itself, then Dominion is the game for you. Dominion, I've got the big box here, which in this game you're Deck building, same thing. You're trying to build your economy, get the most points, win the game. Very simple, very easy to learn. And this is just deck building by itself. The reason I recommend El Dorado first before this is El Dorado is just more fun running across a map, racing across a map. I feel like that's an easier concept to teach new players to get a hold of rather than trying to just count points and collect points in Dominion. El Dorado takes the cake as far as the best option out of these. Now, if you loved El Dorado and you want a game that's even better and still pretty easy to learn and also has deck building involved and adds one more element that is very good for teaching players, another concept is worker placement. So if you want a game that has deck building and worker placement and is a similar theme to El Dorado, Indiana Jones theme is Lost Ruins of Arnak. Lost Ruins of Arnak is Indiana Jones with deck building, with worker placement. Really fun game, pretty easy to learn. Definitely my number one out of all of these. If, if you advance past the El Dorado easier one, this is a medium, medium level game, but still fairly easy to learn and teach. This would be my number one pick out of all of these, but as far as choosing one that's the best beginner board game, that is gonna go to El Dorado. All right, now we're at number five. Number five is a game that I love. It's dear to my heart because it's one of the first games that got me back into the board gaming hobby. You are purchasing cards from a center marketplace, and each one of the cards represents mine 
diamond mine or an emerald mine or a, and then you're using these chips that represent your gems to purchase those mines. Every time you purchase a mine, now you have that same colored gem, which will help you purchase another one. And this game is Splendor. It's, it's great, the feel of it. You've got all these chips, poker chips, which are just fun to hold, fun to play with. The game itself is a ton of fun. It's a race to 15 points, essentially, is all it is. It's a race to 15 points, and you get those points based on the point value on the card itself. Easiest mines to buy or the cheapest mines to buy, they might only cost two or three or four gems. As you go around, you've got different options. You can either take new gems from the supply, or you can purchase a card, or you can reserve a card, or you can play a card. That's the gist of the game. And as you buy more diamond mines or emerald mines, those are worth diamonds or emeralds for future turns so that you can get the higher level cards that are worth more points, like four or five points per card. And those add up real quick. The strategy that I have with this game that I figured out, because I play this game a lot on Board Game Arena. Board Game Arena is a website that I highly recommend. If you don't know if you're going to like a game or not, check it out on Board Game Arena. This is a game that's a lot of fun to play on Board Game Arena to get really good at it because all the setup and takedown on the computer is so much faster than setting up the game in person and you can get a lot of games in real quick. And the strategy I learned that is best for this game is you want to reserve those four or five point cards that you think you can get early on because they give you the gold token, which acts as a wild token that you can use. You want to reserve a few cards and then start going for what you need in order to purchase those cards up later on. You don't want to focus on just all the small cards because you're going to run out of time. It's a race to 15 points, so get in reserve those cards that are five points really quick. Get a five point card, get a three point card, reserve both of those, and then even reserve another card if you want, because then you're gonna have three gold tokens. That's three wild tokens, wild chips that you can use in the game, and then that can help you purchase that card going on. Now, I love this game, great game. If you like this game, and you're looking for another game where you get to feel some tiles, it's a, it's a pretty game. I also recommend Azul. Azul is another game that's really quick and easy to learn. And this is just going for points also based on how you set up your rows, you're collecting. It's a set collection game of tiles. It's a really pretty game. It's fun, abstract strategy game. And highly recommend this as well. And that's my number five on the list. Next, we're going to number four. The number four best beginner board game on my list. My wife's sister, their entire family, they love this game and they love it so much that they bought every other game, the same line of games. So this was like their one board game that they play and they bought all of them. That's how much they liked it. Most people know about, most people have heard of, and it's a super, super simple game to play. It's just a card set collection game and a route building game, and that is Ticket to Ride, my number four, by Alan R. Moon and Days of Wonder. Ticket to Ride is a route building game where you have cards in your hand, you've got cards you can choose from that are laid out on the deck, on the table, you can either draw from the deck or you can draw from one of the face-up cards, and you're trying to collect all of one color of train. Use the same color to build whatever route it is. You have to put blue train cars on a blue route, yellow train cars on a yellow route. If it's a grayed out route, you can use any color train car. There's wild rainbow color train cards that you can get and those allow you to play any color. And you start off the game with goal cards. Your goal card is what route you're trying to get. And you get different points based on what route. You can also get points for the longest total route at the end of the game. As soon as you go below, I think it's four train cars left. So everyone has a huge pile of train cars. And as you're putting them out on the board, that train car pile is dwindling down. And I believe the number's you have one final round of the game and then the game's over and everyone looks and sees how many routes they completed, how many points they get for those routes. Whoever has the most points at the end wins the game. And it's a great game because you can block. You can see, oh my goodness, I think that they are going to try and connect these two routes and I can maybe put my train cars here. I can block them or I can go for my own route. Is it better to block them and stop them 
or is it better to try to finish my own route? That's your decision to make. You can play this game cutthroat, you can play it friendly, and if you like this game and you're looking for something similar to it, there's two other games that are also route building, and these games both have a tile placement element in them, and these are classic games. Catan is probably a lot of people's first game that got into the board game hobby. They started with Catan. There's some dice rolling, there's some luck involved, but there's also route building, there's buildings and towns, more benefits, more resources from those. So this is also a resource gathering game, not super similar to Ticket to Ride, other than the fact that you can get longest road, just like in Ticket to Ride, you can have the longest railroad. Another game that is also a route building, tile laying game is Carcassonne. Carcassonne is a great game. They're similar, so maybe you don't like trains and you don't want a train game. Well, these are other options for you that are also good games for your beginner game list. Another really good beginner game, Cascadia. Cascadia is a game where you're trying to collect the greatest number of points based on how many of certain animals or certain types of tiles that you have in an area. It's a really light game, it's super fun, super easy to learn. It's a nice, casual, cozy game to play. So Cascadia, Carcassonne, Catan, but I have to say for a beginner game, the number four beginner board game, I've got to give it to Ticket to Ride, the most popular one, but they've got Ticket to Ride everything. I think there's like 10 different Ticket to Rides at this point. Very popular. One more thing I forgot to mention just because I was talking about Catan. If you have kids and you want to get them started on something a little easier than Catan, Catan Jr is a great option, it's super fun. You're playing pirates, you're building pirate layers. It says it's for ages six and up, and I've got my, I got two of my kids are seven and nine. I started them on this when they were five and seven years old, and they love this game. My five-year-old could handle playing this game very easily, and it's a, it's a great game to get started in the Catan world. All right, we're at the top three greatest games of all time for beginner board games. My number three on this list, a cooperative board game. This is the first cooperative board game on my list. Cooperative board games are great for those friends of yours or family members who don't like to play. Take that where you're trying to beat each other and one person wins, one person loses. This is a game where everybody is playing on a team collectively against the game itself. So that means that the board game itself is actively trying to defeat you, and you are doing your best to play against the game. Great thing for teamwork. The first game that I ever played that was a cooperative game was Pandemic. And that's why I've got Pandemic as number three on my list for the best game that you can play as a beginner board game to get people into the hobby. I've got Pandemic Iberia here, which I think is better than the original Pandemic. This is the artwork is better, it's more attractive, the, um, the time period is set back in the old days when you're dealing with malaria, disease is spreading fast, malaria, typhus, cholera, and yellow fever. So you're trying to defeat the pandemics of malaria, typhus, cholera, and yellow fever. You're trying to go throughout the board. This It's set in Spain, and you're going throughout the Spanish peninsula, through Madrid, all the different cities in Spain, in ancient Spain. This is set in the mid 19th century, so like 1850s. It's made for ages eight and up. It's a two to five player game. It plays in about 45 minutes. It is a excellent cooperative game. If you like cooperative games and you don't want to play Pandemic, maybe you are a little over the whole pandemic idea. I get it, I'm an ICU nurse. I went through the COVID-19 pandemic. I saw it in the ICU, it was horrible. But I still like to play the game. It's still a great game. And if that doesn't bother you, I highly suggest it. If it does bother you and you want a co-op game that's also easy to learn, an easy be beginner game that's not pandemic, then I suggest Unmatched Adventures, Tales to Amaze, this is a great, easy game. You're, you're playing, it's, a, it's kind of a battle game. You have your, your piece going around on the board and you have cards and you use those cards to attack or move and you go throughout the board and you're trying to defeat the enemy on the board. It's a cooperative game. The Unmatched Adventures series, I highly recommend. It's great for two players who just want to battle different characters against each other, but this is the first game in their series where they made it cooperative and I think this is the best way to play it. And you can play it with all the other 
parts of the series. So if you don't want to play with these, Nikola Tesla, whatever characters are in this, then you can play with other characters from the other Unmatched series, add it to this, and play it cooperative. Great game, lots of fun, had a blast playing that. If you're looking for another cooperative game that's also easy to play, good game for starters, beginner games, I suggest Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter is a crossroads game where the, the crossroads mean there's cards in the game that will add a little bit of flavor to the game, a little bit of different strategy. Something happens and now things change. In this game you're playing a group of survivors trying to survive a zombie apocalypse. You have to go out and collectively try to beat whatever event is going on, whether you need medicine or food for that event. You have to make sure you feed all your survivors or they die. You have to make sure that you don't get bit, don't get eaten by other zombies, you lose your character, you have to get a new character. A lot of fun, great game. But for my pick for the overall number three best board game, best beginner board game, I'm sticking with Pandemic, specifically Pandemic Iberia. This would be my number, number three choice for my top 10 list as far as best beginner board games go. All right, we're getting down to it. We are on my number two greatest beginner board game of all time. This is a game that I think is a great introductory game to chess. So chess, I think, is one of the greatest board games of all time, undisputed. Tons of people play it all over the world. Generals played this game to avoid going to war back in the old days. Chess is one of the greatest games of all time. That being said, this is a game that is a great introductory game to games like chess, abstract strategy games, super fun game, easier than chess, Onatama. Onatama is a game where you are each playing as like Japanese samurai, what is this? Yeah, Japan, ancient shrine of Onatama, master the arts of the journey there with the most promising disciples to prove superiority in battle. This game is super cool to set up. It's just fun to open. I'm gonna open it for you right now just so you can see. The battle mat in here rolls out just like a scroll in Japan. Opens up like this. You've got a red side and a blue side. You flip this little spot open here and here's all your pawns and your cards. Each player has pawns, so here's your red pawns. There's four red pawns and then your king or your the, the master of your art of whatever martial art it is that you're learning. So you're playing these different cards. You have a whole bunch of different cards here and you can actually get more in different expansions. You shuffle them up, you draw, you pick which you're gonna play. So there's a ton of different cards that every time you play, you're gonna be playing completely differently. And these cards tell you what moves you have available to play for your pieces. And the fun thing about this is you're gonna have two here to choose from and then one over here. So you pick five cards. So your, your opponent's gonna have a couple, you're gonna have a couple and there's gonna be one here that's coming to them. You're gonna pick one of those two and you're gonna pass that one to me. And then this one goes to you and you're gonna choose between one of these two cards. And the cards tell you what your move is. So this one says Iguana, and you can move to one of those spaces. Or this one says Panda, and you can move to one of those spaces from your original space. So you're playing against me. The goal of the game is to either take out the master, kill the king, or to end up on the king's space over here. Those are the two ways to win, either kill the king or move your master pawn to their starting spot. This game is a, a ton of fun, easy to learn, easy to play. You could teach this game to a five-year-old or a six-year-old probably. Less pieces than chess. It's a good intro to chess, which I think is one of the greatest games, best game. If I had to pick one game that you should teach anybody, it would be chess. Other games that are similar to this, obviously chess, right? So chess, I've got, this is my chess game that I picked up at Goodwill. It's real quick and easy. It's got the chess board in here and it has all the pieces and my four-year-old likes to play with it and we play chess. I'm teaching him, he's only four years old and I'm already starting to teach him how to play chess. And he's learning how to set up the pieces and he is gonna be a great chess player one day. Now, if you like ancient games like chess, and you're looking for other ancient games that are really easy to play. Another ancient game that I recommend is Nine Men's Morris. Nine Men's Morris is the predecessor to Tic-Tac-Toe. If you can play Tic-Tac-Toe, you can play Nine Men's Morris. Nine Men's Morris here is a 
rendition of an ancient board of nine men's morris it's a it's thousands of years old so in this game you're trying to get a mill a mill is three pieces in a row just like in tic-tac-toe you get three in a row while in this if you get three in a row then you get to take one of your other players pieces off the board and set it to the side and then your your goal is to defeat all your players pieces if you get them down to two pieces then you win because they can't get a mill with only two pieces there's a little bit more to it than that but i have another video that you can check out just look at my YouTube page and I've got a video that talks about Nine Men's Morris and how to play another ancient game I highly recommend and this is the oldest board game that we actually know the rules for and this is called the Royal Game of Ur and it was found in what's now today known as Iraq and it was so it's an old game from the Middle East it's dice you roll dice and the dice are basically like heads or tails dice you either have a dice that has a little point on it that's colored or you have blank and so if you have the colored tip look at that four I just got a four and that's the best roll you can get and then that means I can move my piece on the board and this is a racing game you're trying to race seven pieces around the board and get your seven pieces off the board and there's a little bit of combat involved. If you land on a spot where your other player's piece is, then you get to knock them off. They have to start over on their race. Great game, a newer kind of idea version of this game would be Thunder Road. Thunder Road Vendetta just came out. That's a pretty cool new game where it's a racing game where you're battling and knocking your other player's pieces off the board. This was the original version. This was, this was the most popular game in the world for thousands of years. This is this predates chess. This came before chess. That's how old this game is. Wonderful game and it's the oldest game that we actually know the rules for. And if you're interested in the Royal Game of Her, you should check out, I don't remember if it's on GameFound or Kickstarter, but it's either, it's one of those two. It's either GameFound or Kickstarter and I've already pledged Go check it out on Kickstarter or GameFound right now before the campaign closes. If you like ancient games, then the oldest game in the world, we don't know the exact rules for it, but there are rules that you can play, is Mancala. And my game for it that I got, I think I got this made from the Philippines. And it's a really cool, just big fish that opens up and on the inside are all your spaces to play Mancala. You can play it with rocks, stones, gems, whatever. These come with seashells. So there's seashells here and you put the seashells, you put four in each spot and then you pick them up and then you lay them down. One, two, three, four, one in each spot. And if you end with your last shell in the spot, in your home spot, then you get to go again. If you end in a blank spot, then the pieces across from you, you get to take all of those and put them in your spot, your little home spot over here if you end up with the most shells when you win the game so it's a strategic game where you're trying to end up with the most shells beat your opponent there's different versions of the boards different version of the game no one knows really how the original game was played but there's still a fun game and a fun game mechanism and this game mechanism is built into a lot of board games that we have today popular games like five tribes is a game that uses the Mancala mechanism. So this is a good starter game to teach people the same game mechanic that's used in other board games to this day. Really great stuff. So, all right, we did it. We are at the number one best beginner board game of all time, in my opinion, to get people started in the board gaming hobby, to introduce your friends to board games, or to get started yourself just for a fun game that the whole family's gonna like no matter what. And that's why this top number one category is for a party game. Everybody likes a party game. You can't play a party game and not like it and not have fun. My number one types of games are not party games, but I have never played a party game and not had fun, which is why this is my number one pick of all time. Before we get to that, please make sure you stay through to the very end where I'm going to do my board game giveaway which will be a brand new copy of my number one pick which is a racing game where you are also betting on which camel is going to win the race at the end and these camels are a little crazy some of them go backwards some of them go frontwards it is a fun game it's a crazy game it's got a high player count it is just 
Every time I've ever played this game, anyone that's ever played this game just has a blast, everyone's laughing. It is just awesome. And that is Camel Up. How cool is this game? Camel, the artwork is fun. The, the camels are crazy, they're silly. You can stack them on top of each other. Let's open this game. Let's take a look at it real quick because look at that. It's like a pop-up book. You see that? You open the game board and there's a freaking palm tree right there. How cool is that? As soon as you set up this game, people are already excited about it. They're like, what? A palm tree? It's a pop-up book? That was my favorite kind of book when I was a kid. We're pop-up books. Everyone's going to love this game. There's a track. You're racing around the track. And guess what? There's a little spot for a pyramid. You have a pyramid in the game. Right, This pyramid is kind of like your dice tower. It's not a dice tower. There's a button that you push. You put your dice in it. Your dice go in it like this. You got six dice. Your dice go in it. You put the top on and it rolled a number three. So red camel moves three spaces. And then you shake it up again. Next one comes out. Yellow camel moves one space. So you've got your camels. The camels are so cool. Camels, they're nice, hefty, got a good weight to them. And as your camels are moving around the board, first off, you got your black and white camel. Your black and white camel, they go backwards. Those are your crazy camels. Your other camels, you've got red, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And those are the camels that you're betting on. They're starting off in the first space. They're going around the game. As you're going around the game, some of them, if they land on top of each other, say you have a camel, you have a whole bunch of camels. They're all standing on top of each other. If you are on the bottom camel, if the bottom camel is blue, and look, a blue went one. Okay, now the blue camel moves one space. All the camels move one space. How crazy is that? How are you supposed to win a betting game when you have no idea what's gonna go on? This is crazy. There's manipulation. You can put little tokens down that say that if you land on this space, then they go minus one. If you land on it, they go plus one. They get an extra space. You bet on who's gonna be the number one camel at the end of the race. The first person to make that bet is gonna get the most money at the end of the race, the most gold coins. The whole point of this game is to see who's gonna win by making the most money. So you make more money by placing smarter bets, better bets, and being the first person to realize who's gonna be the number one camel in the race. You set your bet down. As soon as you set your bet down, other people are like, oh, man, I don't wanna miss out. I wanna make sure I get my bet in really quick. But if you bet too soon, before all the craziness happens, these camels over here, they might end up on a camel that's going backwards. And then the backwards camel's gonna go three, one, two, three, and move all those camels backwards. And then this camel's gonna go around and win. This game is nuts. This game is fun. This game is a blast. It's hilarious. Everyone takes their turns. Everyone, there's different ways you can play the game. You can play it where you have kind of like team up and you can both benefit from different things. You don't have to play that way. You can play it the simple way. This is a, this is a fairly easy game. I would say ages eight and up or I wonder what it says on the box. Let's see. It says ages eight and up. It says it's a 30 minute game, ages eight and up. I would say if you're playing with a high player count, how many players can you play? It's a three to eight player game. So you can play up to eight players, high player count, great game, lots of fun. It's got that wow factor, it's colorful. This is a game that will get people excited about board games. You start off with this game and you're gonna have a whole bunch of fun. Everyone's gonna have a blast. Everyone's gonna want more. And they're not just gonna want more of this game, they're gonna want more of board games, period. And this is the game to do it. Now, if you're looking for another party board game that's also a fun game like this one that is guaranteed to have fun, it's a great game, it's a good team game, I also recommend Codenames. Codenames is one of my favorite games to start off with on a game night. We're having friends over. It doesn't matter if it's just two friends or if we're having four or five friends over. If we've got a bunch of people over, you can play this as teams. You can play it two on two. You can play three on three, four on four. And you're going around, you're trying to guess the code words. And the code words, you give, you give a clue to the code word like fruit. And maybe there's three different fruits out there. And so you would say fruit three, and then you would hope that your friend is going to guess those three fruits that are out there. You have to be careful. There's an assassin card. If they accidentally guess the assassin card, then you lose. 
super easy to learn, super fun game, lots of fun. Code names, there's even another version of code names which we just got, we haven't opened yet. This is an adults only version of code names. This has some naughtier words in it. A more adult fun version of this game to play if you're playing with adults. If you're playing with kids, they actually have a Disney version of code names just for kids, which has lots of Disney stuff in it. So um, code names, great option. But as far as my number one pick for the greatest beginner board game of all time, it's gonna go to camel up. I mean, look at this. How can you look at this game and see these camels going around the track and not think, what is that? That looks like fun. I want to play. And guess what? It is fun. Now, if you want this game, this is my game giveaway. I'm giving away a free game who is subscribed to me. That's the rule. You have to be subscribed to me and I got to do US only for shipping costs. I've already purchased another Camel Up game. It's right here. It's still in the plastic, hasn't been opened. I bought this game when I bought this other one for me. I bought two copies just because the first time I ever played this, I knew this was a great game. This is a game to give people, to get them into board games. I couldn't think of who I wanted to give it away to until I started this YouTube channel and I thought, well, why don't I give it away as a prize for my first 100 subscribers? So thank you to my first 100 subscribers and anyone who is interested in this game. If you want this game, leave a comment down below, Camel Up. If you put Camel Up in the comment down below, then I know that you're interested in this game. You have to be in the US and you have to be subscribed to me. I will reply back to your comment if you're the winner. I'm gonna do a random choice Someone who says camel up and I will send you this game. Free game giveaway. Can't beat that. Awesome game. Camel up. You can't go wrong. Uh, my next board game giveaway is going to be at 500 subscribers. So please, please help my channel grow. Like, subscribe. But just so you know, I do read every single comment that anybody has left me. I read it and I reply to it. So if there's anything that you want to say, please leave a comment. I will read it. And when I get to 500 subscribers, I'm going to do another board game giveaway. And I think my next top 10 list that I'm going to do is strategy games. I've already started working on it. That's it. Thank you very much.